Hi, everybody. This is Jayanth. Uh, I'm happy to bring to you yet another guest on the conservation conversations that we keep having. Um, and today I have a very eminent personality. Um, his uh, name is Anish Andheria, Dr. Anish Andheria. And uh, I'm going to introduce uh, him in a bit. But uh, please uh, welcome uh, Dr. Anish Andheria to this conversation. Hi. Hi, Jayanth. Uh, it's, thank you for having this discussion. I think... Uh, <laughs> I've been seeing the work that Toehold is doing in popularizing uh, natural history, popularizing photography, and obviously many of these photographers eventually may mm -hmm. even become conservationists. So I think I'm, I'm very happy that um, I'm here talking to uh, your crowd and the audience. I'll be very, Thank very you. happy to have a free-flowing discussion. <laughs> Thank you very much, Anish. I'm just eager to, you know, uh, I've made some notes on uh, how to introduce you. So allow me a couple of minutes while I do that, you can sip your tea. So um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so Anish Andheria is from Mumbai and uh, he is somebody who I know for a long time now because of my um, beginning in the wildlife world and I started interacting with the Sanctuary magazine and I know him from then. So uh, Anish Andheria, Dr. Anish Andheria works for the Wildlife Conservation Trust um, and uh, there are a long list of accolades that I can tell you about him, but I have picked up a few of them that I'd like to share so that we understand what kind of a personality we are talking to right now. And uh, he is basically a member of the Maharashtra board, as well as the Jammu and Kashmir state boards of wildlife, uh, which is a great position because, you know, you understand the whole state's uh, wildlife related issues and you are a member of the board. So you will be consulted and you will be a part of discussions which will um, you know, come out with policies and stuff like that. That's a fantastic uh, position to hold. Apart from that, I'm sure all of you now, wildlife photographers know that uh, some national parks received um, intimations from the NTCA, which is the National Tiger Conservation Authority, about um, requesting them to not allow tourism in the tiger parks because of the COVID and stuff like that. So this kind of an apex policy making body, which is by the Union of India, Union Government of India, is uh, something which has eminent people who give advisory to the government and Anish Andheria is one of them. So that's uh, something that I hope to talk to him about on behalf of all of us wildlife photographers. What's uh, NTCS perspective on tourism, tiger, COVID and all of that in the near uh, uh, few minutes of the conversation. Dr. Anish is also a member of the state, um, uh, Gujarat State Lion Conservation Society. Um, there'll be a couple of things that we'll ask him about uh, lions and how lions have... Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, being in the last few years, we'll speak to him about what's the policy of relocating lines and stuff like that, maybe in the conversation. He's also a steering committee member of the MP Tiger Conservation Foundation. Um, that's uh, one of the major areas where I know he has worked in the past, Madhya Pradesh, Tiger Parks and stuff like that. To add to his long list of accolades, he has won the Carl Zeiss Conservation Award in the year 2008. Fantastic achievement there. And um, I, I also know that he has uh, uh, studied in NCBS, uh, you know, and also he's, he's a PhD in the Institute of Chemical Technology, which is ICT. Um, I will ask him about NCBS, whether he was in Bangalore. Um, I don't know if NCBS has multiple um, you know, locations, but we'll talk to him about that. Um, he's also a distinguished alumnus um, awardee of 2017 of the ICT as well. Masters in Wildlife Biology and Conservation, which is what uh, we are interested in talking to him about. And uh, uh, interestingly, he's a large carnivore biologist, which means tigers, lions, and all these big cats that we are talking about. Uh, and most importantly, the reason why I know him, apart from the science conservation aspect also, is because of him being an excellent wildlife photographer and uh, his association with uh, uh, various initiatives and, um, you know, uh, photography-related, uh, uh, you know, aspects. So, Dr. Anish Andheria, thank you very much for your time. And I hope I did some kind of justice to your uh, introduction. That's a long list of uh, amazing achievements. Thank you. Uh, thank you once again. And uh, well, most people who work in conservation or wildlife, they really don't count their achievements. And I think no matter what you do, um, you know, the best of conservationists on the earth, by the time they it's time for them to go, they would have just crashed the surface. So it keeps you humble when you work in a landscape which is uh, so biodiverse and when you work in situations which are so complex right. that uh, you always are running behind um, you know the real issues so you never feel satisfied that way so i feel um, uh, there is a lot more to do uh, there is almost we have spent professionally 
about 21 years working in the field of conservation mm-hmm. um have spent more than 25 30 i would say close to 30 years photographing wildlife right but i still feel like a kid in the candy store when i am <laughs> out in the jungles yeah that that's a very modest uh, dr anish andheria i remember uh, even though i knew you for a few uh, more years before this incident we met in the bangalore airport in the security check for the first time and uh, i was surprised that you even recognized me and we had a quick chat there you were also scanning your baggage through the security which probably had camera gear and stuff like that so uh, tell me something uh, can we ask uh, you a little bit about your uh, early days um you you told me once that you are from uh, mumbai uh, in fact from andheri that's why your name is anish andheria tell us a little bit about your early life childhood and education and stuff like that um so yes i do believe that um, you know the past is has a very big bearing on the present mm-hmm. and so definitely it's important to know how somebody becomes what they are so mm-hmm. for instance i was um, i didn't have any conservation uh environment in my family my family my father was into metallurgy my grandfather was a civil engineer mm. so they were engineers and um for me uh i don't know how that uh, bug bit me but my family tells me that even when i was 5 years old i would um only ask for wildlife books and vhs cassettes because at that point uh, you know internet was not around there was only one or two wildlife shows happening on television Uh, or in that era maybe not mm-hmm. but so i i would ask only for vhf cassettes and i would ask for um, uh, books if there was somebody coming in from abroad i would not ask for clothes shoes anything he said they get me some books so all my knowledge mm-hmm. in my early days was based on books about the world outside of india because right. i didn't have access to and there were very few books on wildlife mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. by about 8 standard you know and, and and bombay was much greener at that point in time it was and still bombay stayed, <laughs> and uh, and this in i still say bombay because i was born as uh, in bombay um so uh when i was um uh in andheri at that point we had an orchard uh, not very far from where we stay so mm-hmm. i used to go there often and there mm-hmm. were a lot of the uh, mango trees banyan trees and i would spend long hours there mm-hmm. um so i first I, i think in the 8th standard is when i saw some guys who were older than me running after a snake with a stick in their hand oh. and i said uh, that they will clobber it i didn't know what to do i didn't understand anything about snakes but i'd seen a few in that orchard mm-hmm. and so i just rushed and i grabbed the snake in my hand obviously mm-hmm. they stopped because they thought i am some superman who is not scared <laughs> of snake <laughs> and it helped me because they could have beaten me red oh my god <laughs> but uh, that was my start and fortunately it was not a venomous snake so oh, okay. uh, it was not uh, i mean it tried to bite me but it was not uh, able to it was a rat snake okay. and since okay. then uh, so i rescued snakes when i was in school i continued uh, rescuing snakes bombay is a you know it's part of the western ghats and mm-hmm. you have extremely high uh, diversity of reptiles Um, right bird life was also good i remember making a list of some 35 species visiting uh, the back my backyard in fact when i oh. went to city that is institute of chemical technology mm-hmm. uh, we actually counted the number of species there and it was uh, close to 40 45 species coming in all throughout right. the year right so, so i was interested and the rescue of snakes then slowly metamorphosed into rescuing other things like uh, barbets and birds that were found there and through that Mm-hmm. while taking care of them i started reading books and that's when uh, somebody told me about the bnhs library the bombay natural history society it's, it's library which has a big role to play in my life because oh, okay. i went there and that was like for me uh, there were so many books that's when i got introduced to salim ali and i go, i started you know meeting humayun abdul ali those guys were there uh, mm. so interacting with them of uh, spending uh, the the saturday and some parts of friday in the library because i used to mm-hmm. take notes and then go to the library and refer so mm-hmm. everything that i looked at i didn't know the name of that species mm-hmm. so i took notes and that mm-hmm. i think uh, has helped me a lot to become mm-hmm. a naturalist that i right. am today because sure. uh, 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 it was not with a field guide in my hand and then once you identify the bird you lose interest in it but because right. you didn't know the bird you observe mm-hmm. the bird a little bit more where was it there what was it eating what mm. is the posture of the bird what is the predominant color on the body so that right. i think continued and right. uh, i 
fortunate that Bombay also has Sanjay Gandhi National Park. So mm. uh, as soon as I reached college, I used to dump my bag in the college during lectures. I don't advise that to the students who are listening to me. Uh, but <laughs> I would take my friend's motorcycle and just rush to the forest. I used to spend every alternate day in the jungle because mm. three days we had practicals, three days lectures. So I would skip some of the lectures but attend all the practicals. And I used to mm. go to the park. And there I used to, uh, you know, look at un- indirect evidences. So my schooling actually happened mm-hmm. uh, both in a school and a college in Bombay. But my natural history schooling is all in Sanjay Gandhi National Park. And that's where I got exposed to the large carnivore, which is a Absolutely. leopard. Absolutely. So many sightings. And that, mm-hmm. I think, uh, must have played a big role in what I'm doing currently. Fantastic. I mean, I can relate to some stuff of my own childhood and how small things while I was in school influenced me and stuff like that. So fantastic. Great to know that. Though um, um, I, I think we didn't have something like BNHS or something in Mysore. Uh, we did have a lot of national parks like Nagarhole, Bandipur and all of that. So for young people like me, that was also a great influence. So um, so tell me, you told me uh, while we were introducing you that you've been doing photography for close to three decades now. How did um, a natural history interest, uh, is that a progressive uh, um, you know, uh, what can I say? It's, it, uh, the progression is natural or how did photography happen? So my father uh, was very artistic. Mm-hmm. So he used to sketch beautifully well. He used to use a fountain pen to sketch. Mm-hmm. So you can't make mistakes on it. And his shading and all that, fantastic. He used to love singing. And he had a camera. He had a Mamiya. Um, I still have that in my other other place, my mother's place. Right. Um, and... He had a, a mommy and that's uh, and he used to take pictures. Obviously, right. back it was all black and white. So right. initially, I didn't touch it, but then once I started going to the forest, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and I realized that I am a fortunate guy. You know, I I'm mm-hmm. seeing what most people would love seeing, but they mm-hmm. don't know exists. Right. And right. so that was my motivation to take my camera with me. And uh, sure. fortunately, the first role that mm-hmm. I took it was a print role. Uh, it right. was color right. uh, and uh, photos got printed, uh, published in Sanctuary. So mm-hmm. uh, I was obviously reading Sanctuary magazine, Sanctuary Cup when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. And then uh, so the first uh, shoot that I did, two pictures of um, from my shoot got into the magazine. And right. then there was no looking back because I knew a bit too well. Uh, he <laughs> used to, you know, we I have interacted with him uh, in the late 80s mm-hmm. when he was... Uh, uh, along with Medha Patkar and others, um, to, uh, you know, really fighting that battle against the Narmada, that right. Narmada Bachao Abdulan time. Correct, correct. So I, was, I had gone cycling for mm-hmm. 300 kilometers uh, to protest and all that. So so then, obviously, I used to go to Sanctuary uh, office and, mm-hmm. you know, you know, have chats, also talk about photography stuff. So that's how it is. And I think uh, in terms of photography, really, if you ask me, by mm-hmm. 90. 394 is when mm-hmm. um, I really started, you know, consciously taking uh, my camera with me wherever I went. Otherwise, it would be not the best first option because I would have other things on me. And so, right. photograph, pho- uh, camera, and back then we were not so lucky we didn't have the phone. Otherwise, I would have carried my phone everywhere. <laughs> so, uh, I then started. So, 94, I think 93, 94 is when I started really uh, looking for the right uh, films and slide mm-hmm. rolls and stuff and started consciously taking pictures. Right, uh, and right. one thing that I continue even today is that mm-hmm. I I am an opportunistic photographer. So I don't make trips for photography. Uh, but because okay. my profession and in the past, my passion was so intense mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I made a lot of visits to the forests. Right. And, but right. I would always... I, so I never went for mm-hmm. a... Uh, a fixed lens Mm -hmm. that means um, so I never went I always Mm -hmm. use zoom lenses right Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. Uh, because I needed versatility I couldn't carry heavy equipment all the time because I'm I'm by now that I'm uh, out there on work also obviously Mm -hmm. I can't go with the camera kit with me like that so I will have just a body and then Mm -hmm. a couple of lenses and they are all always zoom lenses Right. And uh, so most of, uh, so the fastest lens that I have ever used now, mm-hmm. I mean, macro lens I'm not counting because mm-hmm. 105 macro obviously is a fast lens, but mm-hmm. macro is a different genre uh, mm-hmm. especially, uh, in, in photography. But otherwise, my mm-hmm. landscapes and all that, the fastest lens that I've used is four. Uh, is, is four. Right. Okay. So okay. Uh, that is what, I, so for me, photography is a tool 
mm-hmm. to make the most of a, a guy who is you know actively moving around right and right. capture and so basically if your the biggest and the most powerful camera is here right your right. eye and your brain right. so uh, so when you are observant and when you are looking at things you really don't need the best of lenses or the best of cameras what you need is the eye and the knowledge of the subject once you have that then pretty much any camera you have in your hand mm-hmm. you will be able to take the most of it so i i'm always an advocate of uh, zoom lenses uh, right. uh, telephoto or as well as wide and right. uh, fewer bodies because then it mm-hmm. tests you as a photographer True. and that's when you become better because otherwise you will have a lens for everything and then <laughs> obviously the lens will do best in that particular space okay lens yeah and uh, and, it, and it will take a lot of away, I mean, things away i mean you can't you don't have to think now the cameras are so you know it's like mm-hmm. computer so mm-hmm. that i took my schooling that way when i started mm-hmm. and i was not trained photographer we never had uh, classes like you guys conduct um, <laughs> so it was all a uh, learning from the field plus mm. at that point i think uh, the people from my era are mm. fortunate because they couldn't edit photos on the camera mm. so and so when we went out with a film and mm. we could not afford much as a student so i would mm. go with the fifth four films mm-hmm. to my ex in the himalayas can you imagine right. four films <laughs> in 36 so it you're looking at about photos. 100 130 140 photos right True. so mm. that's all and you will not know anything till the time you, <laughs> you give it back. to our developer and right. uh, get your photos and at that point if the de- developer has goofed up then <laughs> the entire trip is gone and you are also True. traveling by train and all that so the the amount of pressure that was there on a photographer <laughs> young photographer who True. didn't have so much money True. was to only take those photos where the light is right where True. you are happy with the composition so True. within the opportunistic uh, photography i was very very focused on what i wanted the landscapes right. that i wanted the time of the day so that's True. what i think i continue to do even today and so uh, digital era is fantastic and i am not somebody who says that you should go and use the analog cameras but right. i think uh, uh, people who started doing that mm. are enjoying the digital era because uh, you know uh, you know so much has changed so i am i am enjoying this this phase as well but mm-hmm. uh, i think the entire credit goes to what i did in the late 1990s i can relate to that uh, having born in a studio for a photographer i can definitely relate to that fantastic um, so uh, i'll talk to you about your camera gear and other things in the coming uh, a few questions so um, i'd love to know a little bit about uh, wildlife conservation trust um, and um, can you take us through some of the two three important things that you have done uh, in wct so that some of the viewers who might not know too much of what wct does will understand what areas of work what kind of um, achievements the organization has done and uh, if you can tell us what's the current focus where are you uh, currently focusing on that will be great to know so um, the wildlife conservation trust was started by uh, mr himendra kothari he's a well known uh, a philanthropist in bombay mm-hmm. uh, and associated with the finance world right um, so he and his family and mm-hmm. friends uh, piramals and him mm-hmm. that's urvi piramal and family and him and his family right. started right. the trust in 2002 oh uh, mm-hmm. so it was at that point uh, a family trust so they were doling out uh, uh, donations in terms of in kind generally mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. vehicles and all that to different parks wherever they mm-hmm. went because they said that they wanted to give back to nature true uh, mm-hmm. so in two th- and then obviously he was in touch with me at that point i was in sanctuary mm-hmm. in fact the idea of wildlife conservation trust was uh, you know was developed after he came for the sanctuary wildlife service awards oh, and bitu and i were you know organizing uh, so it started in 2000 2001 and he okay. i think attended the 2002 awards ceremony and he came back stage and spoke to bitu um mm. i was there and that's when the idea for the trust came he immediately um said that he wants to start it so for 7 years uh, the trust went on as a family mm-hmm. trust but then he started feeling that he wanted um you know some uh, feedback on what he was doing mm-hmm. so he said that he wants to you know kind of formalize this he, mm-hmm. he wants an office mm-hmm. uh, that trust should have an office mm-hmm. so so we searched for people but eventually we couldn't find somebody who would want to stay in bombay and so i uh, bitu myself and him we sat mm. together and said i will uh, basically be able to handle both 
because mm-hmm. the trust will still continue donating stuff and mm-hmm. i can do what i was doing editorial stuff in sanctuary right so it started in 2009 i was mm-hmm. the first person who joined and then slowly we started hiring people but mm-hmm. within a year or two we realized and i realized that um, donations are important because they mm-hmm. fill the gaps but mm-hmm. donations cannot um, uh, guarantee the, the the scenario on the ground uh, because there is a gap you can see donations are what they can go to the field guards which is important and i think uh, other ngos people who are listening to me they should always try and strengthen the protection mm-hmm. mechanism by equipping people uh, in the ground so there is no right. doubt about that sure. but just that will not help so one has to start collecting data because anything that you do you need good data and right. when i and my team started um, you know looking for data it mm. wasn't there there right. was no good information out there so mm. slowly wct metamorphosed from uh, you know this donation to then we started the awareness building campaign so you know the save our tigers campaign that mm-hmm. we did the um, ndtv and aircel at that point in time it True. became made that you know the the tiger numbers of 1411 extremely mm. famous you know so that 1411 number and then mm-hmm. the 1704 number so those mm. numbers became a household number because of that campaign that we did on ndtv it was a 24 hour uh, 20 uh, 12 hour uh, telethon right with tigers yeah. and then amita bachchan was also part of that and so True. that was interesting phase mm-hmm. and through that uh, we kind of talked about the plight of the forest guards the the need for nature also mm-hmm. a lot of people who donated and wct matched the amount so what we said is you put 1 rupee we'll put 1 rupee anyways we were going to do that mm-hmm. so through that we introduced the idea of the rapid response units so it's right. in uh, 2011 12 when rapid response units started being talked about then mm-hmm. equipping the forest the guards and and so that we did initially then mm-hmm. we started collecting data on the ground so the team that eventually got built our mm-hmm. people were extremely passionate mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. ready to be in the jungle mm-hmm. all throughout the all throughout the year mm-hmm. uh, we started collecting large data sets on tiger and prey species in the central indian landscape mm-hmm. maharashtra madhya pradesh largely and mm-hmm. it's a it's two big states and uh, you know between them they have currently nearly 900 tigers so I it's see. like a it's it's it has very very high density good quality but discontinuous tiger uh, habitats right so that data that we started collecting and when you start looking at uh, the landscape and not only inside the park but we started focusing on the corridors because parks um, can easily be brought back if something goes wrong because it is still a controlled environment the government True. can uh, that area can bounce back with some amount True. of inputs from the government but right. the corridors were going because of linear infrastructure because of so many other issues so we said let us not just focus let's do the parks and mm-hmm. train the guards so that mm-hmm. they can continue doing the camera trapping work later that mm-hmm. they don't have to depend on us mm-hmm. so that we gave ourselves just 3 years and in 3 years in all those parks mm-hmm. that we did camera trapping in those days in mm-hmm. 2013 14 15 mm-hmm. uh, were are able to now do their camera trapping without us they don't just don't need us at all Fantastic. Right. So, Fantastic. That, but outside the park, also now we have data which is almost, uh, I would say, six years. We have mm-hmm. collected data in the corridors, mm-hmm. and through that, we have mm-hmm. collect, we have designed a composite map mm-hmm. which tells us the the actual flow of uh, tigers, which means the the existing forest cover. I and see. Uh, our study on uh, the camera trapping work, of course, is getting a lot more data on tigers, leopards, bulls, mm-hmm. hyenas, mm-hmm. jackals. ratel um, pangolin which obviously is a is a bonus because right. um, people just focus on the tiger but there are so many True. other things and in sure. central india or across india people have very little knowledge about wolves people have very right. little knowledge about hyena see you True. have been in the forest all the time but if i ask you how many hyena sightings you have seen mm-hmm. outside of say a, a typical hyena habitat of gujarat outside mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. you would say you can count on your fingertips true absolutely so, absolutely but the camera traps gave a different story Ah, and we okay. also came to know that there is conflict between uh, people and hyenas conflict between wolves and hyenas because we mm-hmm. saw hyenas carrying goats in their mouths carrying dogs in their mouths and I so on so forth so, so that knowledge so, so once we collected so for instance the camera trapping for tigers actually mm-hmm. help us uh, discover uh, eurasian otter oh. in sotpura so it was unknown from the central indian landscape there were some two skins from himalayas i see uh, ever of okay. duration otter so that otter nobody even talked about 
right and that is also more than 60 70 years old then because of our camera trapping work inside sapura tiger reserve we got uh, eurasian otters and wow. subsequently i think a team has also found eurasian otters uh, in south but I see. then once we came to know then we look for them in uh, uh, the corridor area and and short shot we got uh, eurasian otters in balaghat as well wow so mm. that tiger work is mm. in layers so it's not mm. like we have moved on we will never move on from that data set that we have we keep building on adding mm. more species uh, analyzing them so mm. that becomes the foundation now based on that composite map we mm. know which are those corridors which are robust which mm. are the corridors which are getting snap or mm. are in the future going mm-hmm. to get snap because they are very delicate at this point in time so right. all our other interventions which means uh, say uh, if we want to improve the livelihoods of communities then mm-hmm. which are those areas that we have to work on so mm-hmm. where the logging or illegal um, uh, removal of uh, wood or poaching mm-hmm. is high that our camera mm-hmm. traps tell us tells mm-hmm. us so mm-hmm. people in india i mm-hmm. always maintain and we have realized that that uh, people keep talking about communities and uh, and the pressure they put on the forest mm. uh, but that is out of force you know uh, what is happening is because the livelihood issues are there mm-hmm. because uh, the way the climate is behaving now and because over generations say over 200 years our forests have got degraded right. that their uh, their income is very erratic and that's the reason why uh some amount of poaching or removal of wood is happening from the forest but True. if you actually talk to communities they respect the forest more than you and i do True. so we True. said how can we stop people mm. from being forced to mm. destroy mother earth mm. you know so mm. can you imagine i mean look at this situation where people True. worship wildlife yet mm-hmm. they have to go to cut fuel wood and when they go there and if they get attacked by a tiger or a sloth bear or elephant or whatever mm-hmm. uh, then uh, you know there is anger but but, mm-hmm. but but that retaliation also in that retaliation they know that mm-hmm. it was their mistake that they went but mm-hmm. how but because of their economic situation they are forced mm-hmm. to go in so we True. said this is the best way you can reduce conflict mm-hmm. you can bring the forest back and that is to uh, equip the communities mm-hmm. with uh, the tools Mm-hmm. to make to have respectable livelihoods right. and uh, they will definitely stop impacting the forest in the way they are doing so right. that, so that understanding of uh, wildlife mm-hmm. has actually translated into understanding of the socio economic so we have a team called conservation behavior team i see uh, mm-hmm. it's a unique team full, and it, there are economists there are social scientists there are developmental oh. scientists working with wcd working in that okay. team to understand what how do you analyze behavior mm-hmm. and how do you work with communities so that uh, their behavior becomes uh, conducive to conservation Understood. and betterment of the environment so without sure. telling them mm-hmm. what to do it right. is see how, what are those trigger points or what are those tipping points which mm-hmm. if you work on automatically mm-hmm. the behavior will be more environment friendly fantastic so that, So, so we have gone in and collected big data sets. Uh, we sure. work uh, use artificial artificial intelligence now to mm. analyze that because some, we collect almost eight hundred parameters per family. Wow! So, okay. So I mean that mm. is impossible to uh, you know <laughs> analyze um, uh, on an Excel sheet. Sure. So, sure. So uh, that now that is now taking us in a different level, which means mm. what is it? So first you know the animals, what they are doing. Is there any food? Uh, how many people are dependent because you get people on the camera traps as well so mm-hmm. you then know the dependence you know what wildlife there is then you know their aspirations through mm-hmm. econ- uh, socio economic studies mm-hmm. then you understand that uh, and then you so then you start solving problems mm-hmm. not by talking to the tiger mm, true. But, uh, true but by working with people and also policy so that right. uh, the lifestyles of people can mm-hmm. go up because their aspirations have to be met you know of you course. and i also aspire so True. that by doing that we are able to then start but the 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 issue with conservation in general mm-hmm. is that mm-hmm. these are not quick fixes what mm-hmm. has happened in india and what you and i are experiencing and what people are uh, observing mm-hmm. is uh, something that is piled up over the last 200 years right right of course of tiger course. hunts never happened before the british came in you know tigers mm-hmm. were interacting with people but those systematic uh like a procession like sport hunting was not there right the maharajas did it 
but lot of it was also borrowed from the british you know once the british went then the maharajas continued to mm. hunt even more but uh, so that culture wasn't there so today the problems are because of what we have done for the last 200 years so the solutions cannot happen mm. overnight which true, means true. you can't solve a problem which is a kind of in a way cumulative impact of that problem for the last 200 years cannot be right. solved in 5 years so true. we are uh, while we are doing these projects of trying mm-hmm. to replace uh, you know fuel wood with uh, some uh, technology so mm-hmm. that uh, mm-hmm. we, we have kind of created a, a water heating system because we realize that when wood is um, wood people go and collect mm-hmm. today in maharashtra mm-hmm. and lot of parts of madhya pradesh the government has already given uh, uh, cylinders so they are cooking on lpg right but but there around we realized that nearly 60 per 65 to 70 percent of the wood is used for heating water and water they don't want to hit heat on a on an lpg because it's expensive so right. for that the wood right. is being used so we said we have to replace that as well so then we came up with the contraption it mm-hmm. already existed in the market we modified it and mm-hmm. what uh, it is a water heating heating system and now people in that area where we have piloted mm-hmm. have given have paid uh, 25% of the cost mm-hmm. it is not very expensive it costs about 7000 rupees but mm-hmm. they said we don't so we said we'll uh, we'll charge you and they said no we want it and even in covid we mm-hmm. thought we will pay all the charges and we'll give mm-hmm. them for free mm-hmm. uh, but people were willing to pay mm-hmm. which means that mm-hmm. they saw the sense because now they can use their agriculture waste mm-hmm. they can use uh, paper that they have used they can use some leaf, leaf litter to heat right. water and True. what have they save themselves from one is the smoke going to second yeah. the time third going into the jungle so that True. time plus uh, exposing Safety. yourself to wild animals True. so the conflict is just one simple solution people right. have actually bought and i am i am not joking if this if the manufacture of these units can be done in scale mm-hmm. people will buy it on their own sure they will not sure. need a wct to subside uh, sub- subsidize it so right. those kind of work that work on tigers eventually has led us into many things and we are now also uh, radio call we have radio tag pangolin i see so wow. there are mm-hmm. there are uh, in fact two pangolins in uh, satpuras two two pangolins in paint mm-hmm. have been tagged uh, mm-hmm. it is giving us some phenomenal information nobody mm-hmm. has ever uh, followed pangolins like that so this <laughs> was the first radio tagging that has happened right. in i think uh, uh, india or probably the whole indian subcontinent i don't know sure. of that but right. so uh, and that is giving us so much information intuitively uh-huh. what me as a naturalist and my team who uh-huh. also are uh, you know equally passionate and they have spent a lot of our years in the jungle right what we thought and mm-hmm. what we see is so different and and that information is going to help us improve the rate mm-hmm. and the success of rehabilitation of pangolins because pangolins are caught right. and they don't know what to do you cannot maintain pangolin because they eat only ants mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. you can't feed them in ants in captivity really True. and so so their condition goes down so the rescued animals pretty much never survive in the jungle they right. believe they think that mm-hmm. it is surviving but it doesn't mm-hmm. okay okay so that will improve plus our whole our understanding which means now uh, we feel that what we do to protect tigers is good enough to protect pangolins is that true, true. the mm-hmm. answer could be no which right. means you will have to have a separate strategy for a pangolin you can't sure. say that you protect a, a so tiger reserves of course because there are no sure. people there so you right. uh, you stop uh, uh, illegal entry of people then automatically right. animals will survive but right. most of the forests are outside tiger reserves are only 51 that's true. only 2.3% of india wow and the yeah. and the core of tiger reserve is just 1.1% of india My the, because the buffer zone has up between 75000 to 125000 people okay so there are 3 million people mm-hmm. living inside the tiger reserves of india oh i see so it is not like tiger so where where you go and take your people for mm-hmm. photography you mm-hmm. generally go to the core but the buffer True. zone is as big as the core and it's True. called the tiger reserve but True. you must have seen like tala mm-hmm. all mm. those uh, places in bandagar those are mm. all in the buffer zone true so true. up to so so for instance tadoba has 81 villages inside the buffer zone right. kana has more than 120 villages in the buffer zone and mm-hmm. so when you talk of kana and and mm-hmm. people said that the kana is uh, about 1000 square kilometers of buffer and mm. 990 square kilometers of core so takana right. is 2000 square kilometers but actually it is only 990 of 
court, court the yeah. remaining is a multiple use area so our knowledge right. mm -hmm. about different wildlife species mm -hmm. uh, plants and animals will mm -hmm. be extremely useful to mm -hmm. protect them conserve them in mm -hmm. areas which people are uh, using which means right. multiple use areas. so that's where the research will help a lot because then sure. you can modify behavior of people because we know when the pangolins are active and mm -hmm. what kind of uh, season is when they are more mobile when they are mm -hmm. not so if mm -hmm. we have we can talk to communities and and and, and giant i'm a mm -hmm. perpetual optimist if we can bring the tiger back from the brink of extinction mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. there is no reason why we cannot bring the pangolin back uh, into our sure. forest in the way it used to be because yeah. tigers uh, interact with people some of those mm -hmm. interactions can be risky mm -hmm. and so people can be inherently fearful of them some of them can be angry with them some of them want to make big money mm -hmm. in pangolin it's also a money business because of the mm -hmm. illegal trade if we can somehow uh, through cites and through other consortiums that india is part of can control right. the demand right. for uh, the useless demand for pangolin scales which is nothing mm -hmm. but keratin like a <laughs> nail right uh, mm -hmm. then the species can come out see what so so the dogs that are there feral animals that are moving into the jungle that information that got collected then we can in fact influence the villagers that your dogs mm -hmm. are i mean you, they are your friends and you like them but the you need to control <laughs> them during this time right and if you do that then you can have dogs and you can even have pangolins in the jungle so True. those True. kind of things so it's a Fantastic. it's amazing and every day we learn and my team is again as i said no they they are always excited because so many times our own belief systems which is based on science uh -huh. are broken so wow. we feel that we are students all the time you know we can't go and say this is what will happen no. uh, there will always be a maybe in everything we say right oh beautiful so it's basically a combination of multiple kinds of data imagery it's also about uh, animal movement and tracking and also understanding uh, may maybe you even talk to people communities and understand what what conflicts have happened what uh, you know they've lost some species of you know, maybe livestock and stuff like that so it's a lot of whole host of things it's not just tracking a tiger's movement or something like that right so it's fantastic to know fantastic to know so um talking about um um the campaign which you mentioned save the tiger campaign so for some people who are not probably so matured about what to uh, infer from a campaign like that um can you tell us what you actually mean when you say save the tiger campaign do you really mean just the tiger or do you, do you want to mention about the umbrella the flagship and how it can help and you also mentioned that we might also be ready to understand if that's not true like you know saving the tiger might not save the pangolin maybe you said so just want to know about that as a campaign why why save the tiger why not save uh, uh, anything else right and see all of us know people who are associated with wildlife mm -hmm. and or photography we know that tiger is only uh, an apex predator it's mm -hmm. on the carnivore mm -hmm. sitting up there and it's charismatic mm -hmm. uh, uh, and therefore people like to know about tigers you know mm -hmm. so it's like a, a, a it, you know is it you know this is like a role model you have sure. many of our role models are normally coming from the either they are cine stars or some successful food uh, food soccer players or cricket right. players right right so similar tiger is just that it's just a role model because people inherently find it attractive mm -hmm. so there is mm -hmm. there may be no reason people may not be able to explain but there mm -hmm. is something in that animal and uh, i'm sure you have seen god knows how many you can't even count but every mm -hmm. single time that your eyes meet the eyes of the tiger mm -hmm. you know even when you are a realist and you say that the ant is as important as a tiger <laughs> there is something that happens and i have seen this across and in fact we did when i when i was also we used to run a program called kids for tigers when i was right. in sanctuary right. it was started in 2001 and 2000 2000 2001 it used to go mm. to almost um quarter million children every year and it ran right. for 17 years you know mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. even before i left sanctuary after i left sanctuary i was associated with the program in some way or the other true a child who is 4 years old and you mm -hmm. show them different photos mm. and and we did that uh, you know to show it to children who really are, and you know children are not biased mm. children just you know they don't have any uh, association with the most powerful or the largest right. it's us adults who <laughs> you know predatory angry kills so we all want to associate our businesses and our attitudes with carnivores right mm -hmm. but children are not like that but when mm -hmm. you show them uh, mm. photos and universally 
they mm. people uh, automatically get uh, diverted or mm. you know in a way uh, get influenced by the tigers mm. and i think the reasons for that mm. in mm. terms of cats is mm. that they have a front facing eye right right carnivores generally because they either have to chase so they mm. their see prey needs to cover a larger area right. because they have to keep a watch on both sides because they are going to get attacked right and mm-hmm. so they they are ready to sacrifice some amount of uh, understanding of distance mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and movement mm-hmm. uh, by having a much wider angle of field of view mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. whereas tiger mm-hmm. wants to uh, focus be very very sure about the distance mm-hmm. and so owls mm-hmm. influence so therefore people get really they love uh, owls mm-hmm. you know people love to look at owls True. similarly people love primates because we are primates front facing eyes uh, primates mm-hmm. are also so that communication is there similarly with tigers and all right. other cats we right. have that that's one and um, also the the ochre color of the tiger with the grass and india has epitomized this animal because the habitat mm-hmm. and it you know all the tigers have evolved in some other place right but only uh, the tiger in a grassland in the sun setting Mm. uh with us evening light falling on the tiger uh, you know uh, glorifying its colors so th- those kind of things and the fiery eyes in the evening so that aura mm. of this species is why people get enamored by it so sure. really save our tigers and kids for tigers and mm. project tiger and mm-hmm. um, national tiger conservation authority and everything mm. that you hear is mm. we are all trying to piggy back on mm. the aura of the tiger True. but True. we have gone much much ahead of it so even project tiger if you see in spirit when it came uh, in 1973 they said True. that tiger is at the top of the food chain mm. uh, you need to for the tiger to survive you need good quality forest because then you need good quality prey right so they also kept talking about tiger as a flagship and in protecting the tiger you will have to do all those things which will help everything even the microbes that live inside the uh, the soil right. and today right. it is more uh, believable than ever before because all our well protected parks is where uh-huh. there is no fire otherwise all of india's territorial forests or reserve forests are being burned by people mm. almost every year or every alternate years right true true and that's where all your top soil is getting hammered your microbes mm. are getting hammered and the entire food chain is getting hammered outside but inside these well protected parks mm. which is about uh, i think 870 national park sanctuaries conservation and community reserves we have in india uh-huh. together it is 5% of land area of india that's all oh i see oh, i see mm-hmm. so through this protected area management and network mm-hmm. uh, and project tiger is a is nestled inside this pna mm. network right mm-hmm. so that is trying to protect so when anybody talks about the lion the mountain lion uh the snow leopard mm. a leopard mm-hmm. or a fishing cat right you know right. or a caracal right mm-hmm. they are unknowingly talking mm-hmm. about the the mice that go into the grass <laughs> the squirrels that climb up the tree right and the microbes that live in the so that's sure. how it is and so sure. even the project tiger and the seva tigers campaign for mm. 12 hours what we did was we called conservationists scientists ullas karan mm. valmik thapar pitu sagal a lot mm. of these people were involved even mike pandey so mm-hmm. filmmakers all mm-hmm. they, all of them came and spoke about tigers but through their talks it mm-hmm. got very clear that mm-hmm. tiger is just a metaphor right right now so we need to uh, everything else and and now there is good amount of research that has gone in and we know from uh, rough surveys that nearly 600 of indian rivers mm-hmm. either originate from or are fed by mm-hmm. tiger bearing forests wow tiger forests right? i think mm-hmm. so i'm not talking just tiger reserves but tiger uh-huh. bearing forests is wherever sure. tigers are could be outside right. the forest as well but right. 600 rivers and for mm-hmm. a tropical country which is largely agrarian mm-hmm. uh, 65% or 60% of indians are still agriculture are, are practicing agriculture True. so you know their connection to water is Irrigation, deeper yeah. than anybody you Absolutely. and i can buy a, 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 a mineral water bottle mm. and we think our life is sorted but mm-hmm. for them 
-hmm. the crops will not survive if the rivers don't flow right True, so absolutely. for a country the requirement of surface water mm -hmm. is not you know i mean it's i think we have the highest requirement right. of uh, surface water to right. feed so many million people who are dependent right. on agriculture think True. about people who are dependent on fish right so either you are dependent on agriculture or mm -hmm. you are dependent on fish right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. either fish from fresh rivers fresh water in the rivers or in the sea india mm -hmm. has sea on three sides right and so the mm -hmm. huge amount of uh, economy uh, of the rural india along the coast is dependent on so water True. becomes mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a life giving source but what is more important to understand is even the livelihoods are dependent it's not just like water for you and me is for survival but mm. most of, of the people actually mm. are earning because mm. of uh, the water right so right. india therefore uh, has to somehow put all its weight and when mm -hmm. i say india i'm just not singling out the government government mm -hmm. can do and will do whatever it can mm -hmm. uh, but unless you put pressure from people unless scientists start asking the right questions unless mm -hmm. economists start connecting uh, ecology and econ ec economics Mm -hmm. uh, in a very strong way, the Das Gupta report is uh, one report that people should read. Mm -hmm. uh, he's an economist who is talking about the connection between forest uh, biodiversity and economy. Right, so right. Unless you do that, and mm -hmm. also uh, mm -hmm. people who are working, uh, uh, just the people who work with people, you know, as in mm -hmm. the people, the 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 NGOs that are working uh, for the upliftment of rural communities, mm -hmm. they also the narrative should mm -hmm. not just talk about rights. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we should also talk about the right to uh, fresh air and mm -hmm. water, which is not mm -hmm. subsurface water, not water right. that comes from the Borewell. bottom of mm -hmm. the earth, mm -hmm. the water that flows on it. Once they start talking about water, automatically mm -hmm. they will have to talk about protecting the forest. Right. Wow. So Amazing. that's mm -hmm. the entire game, and that's the way it is. And for we as sanctuary, when uh, I was there, we were talking mm -hmm. about. the kids for tigers was the right program we need mm. such programs in every single school and uh, jain there mm -hmm. are so many people uh, mm -hmm. who are now in their 30s mm -hmm. uh, i they stumble upon sometimes on the airports and all that and mm -hmm. they, you had come no i i see nowadays <laughs> you know television but i remember you gave us a talk on tigers <laughs> and so now when i ask them what are you doing they may say i am a lawyer but i mm. take my family out and mm. i fight these cases for mm. the environment he may not talk about tigers but he right. may fight for pollution it doesn't true. matter true true so 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 for children to understand this tiger becomes a very easy way it's true. a mascot that the tiger can then talk to the children in a way sure. and say sure. that this is what i need and mm. whatever i need you also need and so if you save me then mm. automatically you get saved is the kind true. of message we gave to the children right and uh, to the adults with with through in children we talk through kids for tigers and the save mm. our tigers campaign was basically packaged differently but the story was the same fantastic i'm 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 sure i i remember when i started i mean i have to um, attribute my um, switch from the it career to wildlife photography to sanctuary and um, i do definitely think kids for tigers back then also was pretty pretty active and we all learned a lot from it even though i was already in my mid 20s um i i do know usha in bangalore and what kind of activities are going on and kids for tigers hats off to that initiative i was going Are to usha, ask you mm -hmm. i no you mentioned usha she is mm -hmm. such a now she is a grandmother and and even now mm -hmm. uh, and i we do interact a few messages yeah. and she still and i remember she was the coordinator in bangalore and she right. was like a pipe pipe for all the teachers swarming and she used to call me because <laughs> they she said that they are bored You're listening to me, I want you to come there. So she would pull me out of Bombay and said, "You have to come." So I used to go to Bangalore so often that the school teachers started knowing me as well. But I remember just one person, no Usha Ramaya, right. Right. has been uh, the link between right. uh, the Kids for Tigers program and those thousands of children who True. probably and many of those maybe mm. now uh, passionate wildlife photographers as well if they really True. go back in time they will probably you know I'm uh, sure. people are listening to us may recollect you know that I'm sure. that that's one and usha at that point also was a grandmother right, right. so it's not right. like so she was uh, younger than now but uh -huh. she still had gray right. hair and she was True. so energetic so 
this is what nature is you know and absolutely it's absolutely. amazing good you remember her you know it's always... yeah, i've interacted with her also and uh, i i definitely remember what she used to do um so tell me something for a company like mine and uh, i am sure a lot of people who are going to listen to us talk are going to be wildlife tourists of some kind so i want to know from a um from a scientist perspective or from a conservationist perspective from somebody who understands data who is who is understanding issues of a particular place kind of a thing what do you see of present day wildlife tourism and how is it uh, a part of the problem or the solution what's what's the take on uh, what's your perspective on wildlife tourism today so i think um um during my times when i say my times are still around i'm not saying that <laughs> my time not. are gone but <laughs> but uh, i'm talking about late 80s or early 90s whenever uh-huh. you went to a park uh-huh. and i'm talking about those iconic parks mm-hmm. uh, it was nearly 70 plus percent foreign tourists oh right okay mm-hmm. um, it was hardly any indian tourists in at least the tiger reserves the indian tourists right. did go and right. i am from maharashtra western ghats so there are a lot of people who keep going to trek and mm-hmm. i'm sure in karnataka also because of the western ghats again there is a culture of trekking True. so those were done but these mm. uh, real tours around mm. big mammals which is mm-hmm. how wildlife tourism became what it is now mm-hmm. uh, that was all dependent on foreign tourist True. but something amazing happened if mm. between 1990 a uh, uh, late 80s mm-hmm. and early 2000s 2005 mm-hmm. onwards i would say mm-hmm. uh, it is also to do with uh, the next generation making money mm-hmm. so younger people having more money in hand the so, it boom uh, i'm right. sure has played a role absolutely uh, mm-hmm. uh, and, and so but uh, what has happened now is suddenly you go to any park in the best mm-hmm. season and you go in a season which is best for the foreign tourists also true true uh, even in march in an exam season mm-hmm. nearly 90% plus people mm-hmm. are indians the and so that uh, is an amazing thing and see people go where there is opportunity mm-hmm. people go when there is uh, fun mm-hmm. so you can't really analyze it beyond that you know that something right, right has happened True. because of which so many more people mm-hmm. are today mm-hmm. uh, you meet anybody in a train you are flying mm-hmm. pretty much three out of four people mm-hmm. will tell mm-hmm. you that oh they have gone to a tiger reserve and uh, you know they went to corbett they right. saw a glimpse of a tiger somebody <laughs> will say you know i uh tourism has progressed and so uh-huh. definitely um, in terms of um, uh, number of people getting exposed to forests i right. think that has gone up exponentially mm-hmm. and uh, the fact that so many indians are going means indians indians are running the economy Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is a fantastic True. thing more True. young people in the past and if you remember mm-hmm. the foreign tourists who came they mm-hmm. were mostly beyond 60s you know there, there are there are so many tours that used to happen True. so True. there will be old people who would come 60s 70s uh-huh. but now you see young people going in which right. is a fantastic thing so the success True. of wildlife tourism there is no two way about it so most people say you know tourism when you talk of tourism and as a conservationist sitting this side sometimes i feel people are too uh, harsh on mm. tourism they right. always they say are tourism theek hai but you know because of uh, tourism uh, corridors are going because of tourism tigers are being harassed because of mm. tourism this is happening when there was hardly anything you cannot make a mistake if you don't sign a paper right right so mm. if i am sitting on top in in w city and if i have to mm. sign papers mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. any decision if i ask mm-hmm. if people to sign and then only then i will sign i will never make a mistake i will always pass the buck on others saying that you had signed first so i sign so <laughs> if tourism is like that if mm. people go to the forest is when you will come across newer problems right and then you right. have to work around those problems you have to True. solve those problems True. but you can't stay away brand tourism is bad because if tourism was bad you mm. wouldn't have millions of dollars coming into the local economy True. and true you know i'm saying this and this is not a joke you go to savai madhapur mm. you go to any park in madhya mm. pradesh why do you think even with the directive of uh, ntca mm-hmm. madhya pradesh still continues the tourism it mm-hmm. is not because uh, you know they want to go against ntc 
they mm. respect mm. NDCA because it, right. NDCA is a governing body. There is no sure. way so they are not behaving like uh, bad bad students or bad kids. Right. They are why they are continuing is because they know that mm. these last few months or mm. one or two months mm -hmm. is are very important for the poor the people. Monsoon. Mm -hmm. Because monsoon will come in, and True. they are also having a maybe a farm where they mm. are going to then grow some crop during True. this time, right? But True. if they don't have money, where mm. will the uh, fertilizers, where will things come? So right. they know that this is a pinch period. So True. they need to make whatever uh, they can. True. So, True. so, so I think um, it's a balanced view. Uh, mm. That tourism definitely uh, has boomed. Mm. However, mm -hmm. however, the potential. That mm -hmm. India has, and mm -hmm. and please pay attention to what I'm saying, mm -hmm. is not even met mm -hmm. by 15 percent. I see. So mm -hmm. what there is in India, mm -hmm. and the amount of money that India can raise mm -hmm. for their own people mm -hmm. by their own people, mm -hmm. is much 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 more than what we are uh, realizing. I and see. so, some what we need to do is mm -hmm. try and move away from just one model of vehicular day safaris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To we have to diversify so that people can go back trekking. Mm -hmm. People can go um, sit on machans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People can go uh, with children. They, see, mm -hmm. when I was growing, and I used to go for so many nature walks. Mm -hmm. But now, most of the places, this is a park, you can't walk mm -hmm. here. That's a park, you need to take 50 permissions, you can't walk. We need to go back because people need to love nature and they will love nature if they mm -hmm. are exposed to it. So right. tourism needs to go to another level now. And, right. which, and this COVID should mm -hmm. make people uh, be more creative, which uh -huh. means if you put all your money on one type of a product, Mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. the COVID situation is only going to happen more frequently. True. And if, you, different to that, mm -hmm. then if you try and diversify, mm -hmm. do things in a uh, hybrid manner, which means mm -hmm. do sessions online, mm -hmm. uh, educate people on, mm -hmm. online, mm -hmm. and then take them out so that they can go out much more focused. Mm -hmm. Or try and uh, um, amalgamate mm -hmm. A trip to the forest with mm -hmm. a, a social aspect to it, which means go right. and watch your wildlife, but mm -hmm. go and spend some time in the village to understand, not mm -hmm. go in the village to observe people as if mm -hmm. they are exhibits. Right. Don't want yeah. that. True. That's the last thing you want to do. Now mm -hmm. oh, he's a Toliga, look at him, mm -hmm. he's no, no. <laughs> right. Go there, mm -hmm. go there, talk to the Sholigas, talk mm -hmm. to the beggars mm -hmm. talk to the korkus but mm -hmm. not as a city goer saying ha batao char pair pe khade raho do pair pe khade raho not that mm -hmm. understand meaning mm -hmm. sensitize them right. let them go and interface with them mm -hmm. and understand the requirement because when i as a mm -hmm. conservationist i know mm -hmm. with so many years of work mm -hmm. when i have an interaction with mm -hmm. a person who lives in the forest mm -hmm. even today Mm -hmm. Between the two of us, I gain more. Right, right. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt. True. Okay, and I'm True. not talking romantic stuff. This is reality because right. what we learn yeah. is that mm -hmm. with such minimalistic lifestyles, mm -hmm. with such mm -hmm. difficult times, mm -hmm. COVID has added one more layer to already right. so many difficulties that they, they still, there has never been a situation mm -hmm. whether I was uh, in Himachal, whether mm -hmm. I was in Uttarakhand, whether mm -hmm. I was in Karnataka, I have spent a lot of years in Karnataka. Right. Uh, Kerala. I have always been welcomed uh -huh. in the most destitute looking family. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That has happened. You know, that right. itself changes without a word spoken. True. Having mm -hmm. that uh, black tea mm -hmm. with uh, good jaggery, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which is sweeter than jaggery itself. Right. <laughs> is life changing. True. And so that is the beauty of India. And I have not even started talking about Northeast. Can you imagine? Right. That just that, those Absolutely. seven states, there is so much untapped mm. potential. And when I say untapped, mm. I am not talking like a businessman who says mm. untapped, meaning go there, uh, mm. do some pedicure on the mountains, remove those trees which attract a certain insect because they bite you, mm. uh, create lawns. No. Untapped potential is to keep it the way it is, but mm. try and start 
diversifying from those five star three star type of hotels into uh, home stay right once people in the village for instance the best example is ladakh so right. a snow leopard and the snow leopard always attracted a lot of people from abroad as well mm. and uh, so they kept going and indians mm. in fact were not going to uh, the snow leopard country so much it is True. just started right you know in the last 10 years otherwise nobody right. ever went for snow leopard they went for True. trekking but True. lot of foreigners used to always come I see. they interacted and stay mm. they stay in the villages right because mm-hmm. they are coming because they are in all of the mountains so they come right. as a spiritual thing exactly. what happened is they interacted with local people mm-hmm. the local people adapted some of the good practices mm-hmm. and if you see and i'm mm-hmm. sure you have gone there many times the hygiene mm-hmm. overall hygiene in any of those villages mm-hmm. where they have homestays is much better than the hygiene in the peninsular country india True. because True. there they also learn they realize mm-hmm. that you know at certain way we need to be or we may be okay with some amount of garbage here and there but people who come in are not so right. you can't give them a directive saying that this is the paper follow this line no uh-huh. only when you interact things change on both sides so i think sure. uh, untapped sure. potential huge anywhere you go you talk of uh, kashmir you talk of uh, coastal uh, uh, beach nobody has ever gone and looked at intertidal zones nobody has done walks on the coast i mm. when i was young i remember i used to do mm. two things one is i mean going for birding and all that was always there mm. so i'm not talking about the basic things but right. i would always have one trip which is called uh, which i used to walk on the beach mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and okay so you walk and you walk for 5 days mm. oh you walk, okay you stay Uh, in a village next mm. to the beach then you keep mm. walking on the because there is a beach line right continuous true, true. and do a ridge ridge walk which means go mm. up on the western ghat thing go mm. in the morning uh, uh, stay on the platform next day take mm. an st bus go to a starting point and walk for 4 days and mm. you will probably come out somewhere near pune or mm. somewhere mm. there and right. the map in your hand sure But those sure. kind of walks really mm. change my perspective about so many things and it was you know father of meditation Mm-hmm. so a lot of people need mm-hmm. to go there you can't right. you don't have to go to some plush uh, hotel for meditation sure. you sure. just need sure. to create so people right. in the tourism sector should mm-hmm. diversify i think and uh, this is the best time covid has really made people think out of the box i hope that mm. uh, uh, especially people in this uh, extremely important business line which mm. is the most renewable and mm-hmm. least uh, Uh, impactful negatively mm. impactful on the environment really mm-hmm. uh, you know innovates and india as i told you is huge amount of untapped pot- potential sure. because a we have large mammals mm-hmm. we have very high diversity of birds more than 1300 species of birds mm-hmm. we, and people who love snakes more than 305 species of snakes right. uh, you yeah. cannot even start talking about frogs so mm-hmm. there is different type of stuff for people right. you want to look at marine life there is no absolutely limit because i know some absolutely. people in uh, in goa Now, Goa uh-huh. people go for you know they go for the beach, but right. in the ocean there you go right. to uh, Alwan, which is in Maharashtra. True. Even in uh, uh, Karnataka, right. because Netrani. there are so many amazing places. Natural, yeah, mm. you can go. There are everything there. Right. Water is slightly turbid, but mm. that's the nature of the beast. You right. still True. you can make the most of it. So I think sure. uh, the answer was long, but I think ah, but uh, it's important yeah. that we understand how we have come here. right i would love to connect with you on that point and see how you know i would love to get some ideas as a company which is into tourism as well talking about um, what you mentioned uh, holistic wildlife experience versus today um, a lot of i mean i keep telling people that you know the person who was a wildlife lover picks up a camera and what the output is versus a camera lover who picks up wildlife as a subject and what the output is i am very sure there's a big difference so now what uh, do you think about this huge community of photographers just to tell you that to hold in 2020 um uh, counted 10000 individuals who learned photography from us a small company 10000 people imagine what number of people in this whole country may be uh, you know generating the number of wildlife uh, photo enthusiasts um, now the question is uh, do you think uh, there is a potential or to an extent has it happened that these people who are great wildlife lovers some of them going to places taking pictures are able to contribute to some kind of positive change or is it just contributing to likes and uh, follows and uh, personal pleasures on social media so i think social media is what is visible so for instance mm. if somebody had to analyze you they'll say oh mm. this man 
is on the social media he is training people and all but mm-hmm. that's not you social media is the kind of clothes we wear mm-hmm. it's out there that's mm-hmm. what is visible that's not everything mm-hmm. so a lot of people who put on for social media also are very very serious about many things so right. i think social media has its place mm-hmm. it is not a game changing place though because mm-hmm. uh, attention spans are low mm-hmm. so but it has a place and today True. i think the most important thing is um, mm-hmm. people in the past if they were not good at talking mm-hmm. or if they were not mm-hmm. presentable if they thought they were not presentable mm-hmm. they never did anything right um, true now social media allows you it doesn't matter who you are mm-hmm. it doesn't matter where you are from you could be mm-hmm. from the remotest part of northeast india mm-hmm. yet you will be visible to the world to mm-hmm. your work sure and sure. so the, that's amazing stuff and so i really uh, i'm a big fan of people <laughs> who are trying mm-hmm. to uh, uh, make themselves visible to work mm-hmm. i'm not talking about you know these selfies all the time and mm-hmm. talk, you know that's a I different understand. thing altogether and i don't want to comment on it because i have no problem with that i just right. and it's possible to choose what you want to see <laughs> so mm-hmm. social media i think has its place mm-hmm. but the limitation is in terms of action right so what we need to do is as of as photographers mm-hmm. a lot can be done first of all mm-hmm. everybody who is going to a forest um, mm-hmm. going to say kanha mm-hmm. going to nagarole mm-hmm. uh, adra mm-hmm. all these beautiful places in karnataka mm-hmm. anywhere mm-hmm. Uh, they are taking pictures mm-hmm. they are posting everywhere someone mm-hmm. with a scientific pen mm-hmm. is looking at those photos mm-hmm. and they can really construct family trees of tigers mm-hmm. from those mm-hmm. you can also photograph problems that are happening Right. not as a activist see there are problems when you go to a tiger reserve you mm-hmm. are going and sitting in a um, smoke generating vehicle noise mm-hmm. generating vehicle an elephant mm-hmm. is charging you you're taking mm-hmm. that video and then you talk of how the forest department is not working properly no <laughs> that's not the way to do it what right. you do is you post it right right the the way you think don't mm-hmm. add adjectives to it mm-hmm. reporting reporting mm-hmm. people don't do people are opinionated about everything sure this happened that is bad everything has to be classified in good or bad mm. there is nothing like good or bad these are perspectives mm-hmm. right. photography is also a perspective go out True. there document mm-hmm. present it the way it is so that's what once you start doing it will start taking a different uh, uh, sure. shape so i think sure. simply put as a photographer first of all if you just pick up a phone mm-hmm. and start taking pictures you are a photographer so True. you don't have to be anish anderia or jayant mm-hmm. sharma to be called a photographer mm-hmm. which means True. everybody today in india more or less is a photographer is a photographer True. or owns a smartphone True. so then what can you do with it create a story mm-hmm. don't go and just start capturing so again when i said Sharp don't shots. Go, <laughs> as right. i as i have taken a lot of photos in life lakhs mm-hmm. of photos mm-hmm. i also go and like to take certain photos mm-hmm. and there is nothing wrong in it but mm-hmm. what will impact so all that i'm talking right now is from the impact point of view that what True. can you do because right. if you are not a professional conservationist or if you are not working in that field but you are mm-hmm. a photographer and you happen to love nature mm-hmm. then can you contribute to so all my answers are based mm-hmm. on that one True. is um photo stories mm-hmm. anything you see try don't build stories from one photo <laughs> true <laughs> because that is again your belief <laughs> photo story True. is to pick it from start to end and let the photos tell the story you True. don't have to say that aisa ho raha tha because that person was baiting a tiger mm. and then there was water being poured there and that mm. is why this happened no that is kahani right photo story is where you actually mm. go and capture it on film which means there is proof right so that's what i call photo story not mm. pictures try mm. to be connected to each other through stories right right sure so that True. is deep dive into a subject of your liking mm-hmm. and it could be a mosquito mm-hmm. okay it could sure. be a virus mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and a person who is interested to cover that story can also link it up to nature eventually right mm-hmm. okay. so it's about that you go right. anything and and people can just photograph skies mm-hmm. i tell people that when you photograph skies mm-hmm. uh, you are taking it from different angles from the artistic point of view now mm-hmm. keep that aside if you are mm-hmm. at one spot fix a spot if it's your balcony mm-hmm. you make sure that if you want whenever you mm. should be able to place your camera at one spot mm-hmm. without changing the focal length mm-hmm. and capture photos 
Mm-hmm. Once you do that at different times of the day, mm-hmm. you will be able. The stories will emerge. True. Because you I have understand. a documentation done in a systematic manner. You I don't understand. have to go to a tiger reserve and just take a tiger snarling at you. Right. So that that can or or just something like I have a colleague mm-hmm. uh, in WC. He is a uh, he is a he was a journalist. He also mm-hmm. writes for us. Mm-hmm. He got interested in butterflies. Mm-hmm. and so he lives on a in bombay is all vertical so he's mm-hmm. not on the ground floor so he mm-hmm. is somewhere i think 6 7 8 10th floor or something but mm-hmm. he has some plants and he chooses plants which are butterfly friendly i see and he started observing butterflies there were so pieros and some species were coming and laying eggs there through him his mother got interested now her mother with her phone takes a photo and he published that <laughs> right <laughs> can you imagine somebody who is close to 60 and mm-hmm. beyond below before the uh, phone age mm-hmm. also got interested now that itself is a story True. he in fact went in a so uh, to a uh, burial ground mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. so in a smashan where mm-hmm. you know there are some plants and stuff there so he uh, also captured butterflies in that oh. kind of an area oh and i that see that photo in change the way so all i'm saying this is just one example so stories are important as a photographer right, right. then uh, cover things across the season don't right. be those may june tiger photographer where tiger will be sitting in the water and panting <laughs> like that and then you will say i took 500 tigers in my one trip i saw eight tigers no do that True. i'm saying do that but I mean, go across the season a True. tiger in monsoon like habitat right right my favorite is a different photo altogether mm, true right true. so mm. that then uh, look for conservation angles to everything mm. which means mm. if you are on a road and you see a dead animal uh, uh don't stop there straight away because otherwise you will be dead from behind mm. park mm. your vehicle far away wherever you can then see if it's all safe right. try and make a photo or two right uh, where the animal is don't move the animal so mm. then the photo becomes good true True. don't make photography don't control so many things in a photo in photography True. that it takes away and people True. like us who have taken millions and have mm. seen trillions of photos can right. sense mm. we True. know mm. right so don't go overboard but mm. there are stories like you go to kutch mm. uh, i don't have my uh, i i could have showed you some photos but mm. i will send those photos to you right? yeah i will add it on the b roll so, so, the video so mm-hmm. for instance on uh, uh, in uh, little run of kutch Mm-hmm. you are in a season where birds or migrants have gone so mm-hmm. you are in okay. somewhere march place not there and mm-hmm. you are walking it's a patch so where there was water the water has also receded now mm-hmm. so it's now it doesn't if you don't know that mm-hmm. there were thousands of birds there mm-hmm. uh you, you know it's impossible for you to imagine right and then you suddenly see one feather mm-hmm. of a bird stuck mm-hmm. in a thing and right. it's going in the air like this right. because of breeze right no bird anywhere right but if you have a primary then there mm. must be birds there right so True. just take a photo of that with that mm. stark background all that and it mm. is a story so True. conservation stories um, mm. are everywhere for that you don't have to always carry but now the cameras are so small with all mm. these mirrorless you know that you mm. can in fact take a camera with you every day anywhere True. you want to go True. but your True. phone is equally good so then that you do then uh, popularize documentation which means um when you start writing these when you start documenting without adding your own gyan mm-hmm. to it mm-hmm. gyan meaning you know all these <laughs> very romantic stories to it sure people will get to a habit it is all about yeah. habit okay right. uh, and photography is about art mm-hmm. it is about the person behind it mm-hmm. it is about the mindset of the person behind it it is right. not about budgetary what right. i see unfortunately and uh, i'm not talking about everybody but more or less people mm-hmm. always when i give you a talk on photography they ask me what gadgets do you use mm-hmm. which is the biggest lens you have mm-hmm. how do you do which is the latest what do you think is the best in the latest mm-hmm. i tell them it's not about the gadget at all so True. if you are a wildlife photographer or any photographer try and decouple mm-hmm. the gadget from the work you do don't True. keep discussing gadgets don't keep discussing True. the post processing that is important mm-hmm. but leave that aside make it mm. simple photography True. is much much more simpler if True. you think of just what you want to capture think mm. of photo, uh, a camera 
as mm-hmm. an extension of your body right mm-hmm. whatever that camera is mm-hmm. figure it out and if you are a good photographer and experienced one you will be able to figure out a camera mm-hmm. no matter if you have co- covered everything on the camera you can't see anything True. so you don't know what camera it is right it will take you about an hour uh-huh. to know what the camera cannot do right <laughs> once you know that uh-huh. that's it then that camera can give you award winning photos as well sure the problem happens when you try to take a photo mm-hmm. to match someone else's photo mm-hmm. with a gadget that doesn't allow you to do mm-hmm. that and True. then you start thinking of yourself as a lesser photographer right that's the worst part of it so i think True. leave the gadgetry out more mm-hmm. talk on document inside and mm-hmm. if you look at photography as a conservation tool so be right. it sure uh, if somebody wants to uh, use it as an art form so be right. it sure if you want to use it as a journalist so mm-hmm. be it or for me it is more to document naturalist so my kind of photos if you see my instagram mm-hmm. or wherever mm-hmm. i don't do post processing so much because as right. i said i am a whole era guy so i mm-hmm. won't shoot only if the right. light is bad or something is not right mm-hmm. so True. whatever i've shot some amount of sharpness somewhere some saturation somewhere very rarely on highlights and shadows right right nothing else no pixel true. change nothing nothing yeah. nothing true true so absolutely so you will tell if you see some of the good photographers also i see so much saturation i don't true. know why nature mm-hmm. should look more attractive <laughs> than it actually is true. nature is supreme so you look at and giant you are in the business so you mm-hmm. know uh, that a sunset mm-hmm. you can cheat on a sunset or a sunrise because mm-hmm. it gives you different shades right But right you what you have to understand is when i took that photo uh-huh. was the sky orange or red uh-huh. right or magenta right you can't go back and tell your software to make it magenta when it was orange true you understand because Absolutely. what people don't understand is when you change the color of the sky mm-hmm. lot of other things also change so you cannot have when a sky is red Mm-hmm. it a subject that is visible mm-hmm. will not be visible like it is in the photo when it is orange true so it so will have a color the sky but mm-hmm. the other things you can't change because you don't understand true. that so true. so so i think this super saturated photo some of the very good photographers mm-hmm. and a very dear friend of mine he's a great photographer i don't want to call he is listening to us um, <laughs> he'll be smiling <laughs> so i tell him uh, yeah. why do you do this he yeah. says uh, i'm not going to even mimic him <laughs> is it the blue skies and the greens you are talking about <laughs> <laughs> so no so he says i my ga- my job as a photographer is to mm-hmm. make people fall in love right right so and i have seen mm-hmm. that when my photos say more than they said to me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when i took them mm-hmm. more people look at it right right mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. now that's also fine but mm-hmm. i'm talking about the those are accomplished photographers they know True. what they're doing but True. that should not be the benchmark so people right. should not say oh let's you know this is let's make this tiger orange you see so many photos just right. uh, people go through your instagram and you will see tigers looking red all the time tigers do look red in those 15 20 minutes in the evening right but right. you will see tigers which are kind of deadly red greens which are greener than the the greenest evergreen forest so ranthambore cannot have that green true so true. the sky is always blue the clouds always white like they have used polarizer so that we must change try sure. and capture what you can but if you are an artist then call yourself an artist there are some photographers who on instagram also they mm. definitely work on their image but mm. they say that this is mm. how they so they True. their art form is photo photography mm. and then post processing together that is what they make that's sure. fine sure. perfectly fine so sure. that's what i think and um, i think um, don't get in the business of getting close to wildlife all the time Mm-hmm. because if i were to uh, photograph giant mm-hmm. just the face <laughs> i will not be able to tell the story as to whether he was in True. the forest mm-hmm. whether he was in his house whether it right. was time of, what time of the day was he in sure sure whether was he in india where he was he so True. the closer you go you cut out 
so story, many yeah. more things sure. so habitat more, environment mm -hmm. and that is why zoom lenses are always fun for me because right. i see it in a certain way and then i try and widen it so i go right. to the closest point and then the widest after right. a point you know what you want to take so you don't sure. keep doing that but that's right. what your mind is and i have always agree. seen that the photos where mm -hmm. there is something else mm -hmm. other than just a close up of a bird or an animal mm -hmm. has uh, you know more uh, comments on it right there right. could be more likes right on a right. photo which is like a close up close shot mm -hmm. beautiful photo mm -hmm. but comments you will get mm -hmm. when there is something where the person was made to think beyond true. true so that's what i think and don't go close to nests nest mm -hmm. photography you must avoid at all sure. times sure. no matter what story you want to tell there are ways mm -hmm. of telling stories about nest mm -hmm. don't bother mothers with mm -hmm. young ones whether it's in the sea whether mm -hmm. it's on land that's mm -hmm. all true if somebody bothered your mother mm -hmm. she would have slept uh, mm -hmm. that person but mm -hmm. we don't think about it and mm -hmm. be careful when you're photographing amphibians right. too much light uh, can desiccate them mm -hmm. so in that urge to make the uh, out of the world photograph don't because some of these flash guns now are so mm. powerful mm -hmm. uh, and that so many multiple flashes are being used during macro that mm. many of these animals are compromised you true. will not know that because you move away true true and sometimes the worst thing is when you go as a group mm. then one frog you get and all seven of them or 10 of them will photograph that frog Absolutely. that frog yeah. is finished forever so right. be mindful of that Sure. So a photograph is never more important than the welfare the of the subject animal yeah. or the landscape that you are shooting them on. Absolutely. Never pamper yourself by saying that I have to take this because I this animal can go, but because <laughs> of this photo I will be able to save. No, and therefore <laughs> I even tell tell taxonomists. So I am because mm. I am also a researcher, and I tell mm. them that mm. if you can use a camera mm. to uh, to capture those. different facets of an animal mm -hmm. don't put it in formalin mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know all these rare species sure. that are being sure. used for by taxonomists also they go overboard right the certain rules were laid mm. early in life where uh, you know we didn't have all these gadgets true so they used to take 10 animals 50 mm -hmm. animals so they continue doing that now if you have a species which you don't mm -hmm. know how many are there and right. if you go by the old books and you collect 20 uh -huh. you you done so <laughs> so that's i think uh, i think photography is a is like a physical sure. training right of the body and also the mind uh, and that's what you must do you must thank use you. it thank to you. your advantage fantastic in fact i have a couple of questions i was going to ask you i've already answered them that's uh, fabulous i know i know uh, you know if we keep talking about all this we probably can't talk about for hours together anish so it's been fantastic to understand your perspective coming from the science and also from the photographer's perspective which is a rare combination um last question i have is uh, uh, do organizations like wct and many such organizations uh, have projects where you want to have a conversation with a common man or you know is it something which is not yet done to an extent because i feel more people like you when you talk to the common man there is a lot of things that we will learn that we otherwise would only you know uh, imagine um, on our own we'll not be able to hear science and uh, perspectives and stuff like that so are there any formal um, communication uh, mechanisms like for example do you uh, conduct some kind of workshops or stuff like that for people who are interested in citizen conservation initiatives to participate so i think a uh, very very important question jayant and i think um, uh, so wct tries to involve people i am not saying we have tried enough Mm -hmm. um there are some uh, obstacles in it but mm -hmm. uh, for instance citizen science can be done beautifully well through apps mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um when we ran the campaign on linear infrastructure mm -hmm. uh where roads and railways mm -hmm. and canals etc that cut through corridors mm -hmm. and stop animals from moving mm -hmm. uh, and kill lot of them also mm -hmm. we, that was an ideal project which where you have an app you download mm -hmm. that app you are all traveling people on motorcycles wherever if safety is maintained which means you are mm -hmm. not stopping anywhere like that mm -hmm. you take precautions and get down and you mm -hmm. can read a uh, tag photo tag mm -hmm. that animal even if mm -hmm. you don't know what that animal is that mm -hmm. and that photo gets uploaded 
people in our team at the back end can look at the photo identify the species obviously the lat long lat mm-hmm. lat long longitude latitude are already on the photo so mm-hmm. you know where the photo was taken and right. that data that mm-hmm. people are collecting and it could be even a truck driver mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. they that data the amount of data that that can mm-hmm. generate mm-hmm. uh, the analysis on it mm-hmm. is can change policy at national level because an organization right. like us or mm-hmm. any conservation organization uh, while we know what to do with the species we can only do it in a small area and india right. is huge mm-hmm. 2.5 million square kilometers wow mm-hmm. so we do more camera trapping outside protected area than any other organization true mm-hmm. and we cannot cover more than 8 to 9000 square kilometers a, a, a year wow wow it's like a long long uh, way to go Mm-hmm. correct and if you look at tiger habitat or any habitat it is not 3.5 million but mm-hmm. it is still around 3 and a half lakh square kilometers mm-hmm. which is 350000 square, square kilometers, kilometers right? right now right. if you have to if i find some solutions through mm-hmm. uh, wcp's work if we are able to um, uh, find a solution for a certain highway and we feel very mm-hmm. happy actually mm-hmm. it is thing because mm. we are building 23 kilometers of road every single mm. day right four wow. lane or six right mm. and mm. we are going to touch 44 kilometers a day wow. within a couple of years so i see can wct even you know cover one state no mm. and mm. wildlife institute of india do surveys all throughout india no mm. so those kind of projects are mm. perfect for citizen science similarly right. if you take a case uh, a case study of bird life international uh, in uk so mm-hmm. much uh, mm-hmm. bird watching happens mm-hmm. that in the actual elections mm-hmm. you know uh, the voice of people who are part of the bird life international so there are you know a million members mm-hmm. so they become a force to reckon with i And see obviously they will then influence who gets uh, elected you know at mm-hmm. the national level true so uh, so birding for instance and nowadays you have some fantastic apps right um, so that is another field where you can similarly sure. food food mm. you go in you are uh, you know simply the kind of fish that is landed mm. you may not have the time but if you mm. go and buy fish mm-hmm. you just take photos of fish mm. there are some species that are actually um, uh, are now newly entering the market or now size of the fish if you know how to uh, make sure that the size of the animals mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. can be judged from the mm-hmm. photo and you must mm-hmm. put something out there so for scale. instance when you go mm-hmm. and see a fish put a pen if not mm-hmm. a scale you know right. everybody knows what a pen is so what is the size of the fish so once you start doing this just mm-hmm. in the fish market you will be able to collect data mm-hmm. on kind of species that are entering some of mm-hmm. the uh, species that were never there or some of the species which are being caught mm-hmm. at a much smaller age than right. they used to caught in the past so because, because there's no fish Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Correct. Similarly, mm-hmm. all those photographs that you take in the tiger reserve mm-hmm. are useful. Uh, mm-hmm. Sometimes you have to be careful not keep mm-hmm. mentioning of where those photos were taken. Uh, I'm not worried about the well protected uh, core areas of the park mm-hmm. pretty much. But if you are photographing wildlife outside, mm-hmm. then you should refrain from putting um, uh, too much locations. details. Mm-hmm. Protection mm-hmm. is not very good outside. right inside a tiger reserve i don't really care if you are photographing the backwater female and call it a backwater female and say that it was on uh, uh on, on, wherever. Uh, wherever. Right. that's okay mm. right but mm. not outside so that that True. kind of stuff but i think yes your question is very relevant and right. uh, we are also planning to see mm. how we can use because uh, data points is what you need you don't mm. need scientists Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right so mm-hmm. everybody can participate and there are many things also on the photography side i'm sure that right. you can also do for instance uh the first entrance of certain birds during a certain season so right. now climate change i mean we have you know you can count climate scientists in india we don't mm-hmm. have them right in that kind of mm-hmm. numbers mm-hmm. but if we can only tell mm-hmm. when did a particular sandpiper come in this mm-hmm. year Mm-hmm. when did a particular rail come in or when did the birds first land mm-hmm. in little run of kutch mm-hmm. and when did that they exit mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. itself is a great data set for True. climate scientists sitting anywhere on earth right so 
and remember there is no um, quick fix which means some of your issues you mm. can definitely through citizen science solve rapidly like the road thing is sure. one where the rules can be passed right but right. in other things it will have to be built up over years so right. magic will happen but mm. after 5 6 7 years so you need to have the patience so sure. yeah i think we must have right. more of these discussions and uh, involve other ngos right. as well so right. that we can all come together and rather than having uh, five apps one app <laughs> per ngo and dividing right. the, the the data <laughs> data into multiple subsets Mm. Yeah, yeah. Subsets, no. Mm. Just mm. come up with the consolidated data sets, which is open source. Let people use. Keep mm. it open source is what I say. My my last thought before I let you do the closing comments, Anish, is somewhere I'm a little worried about the intent and passion and all of that that you know enthusiasts like us have. Somewhere I I'm, I fear that you know it's like a road to disaster paved with good intentions. For example, the Amur uh, Falcon story of what happened in Lonawala. and how millions of uh, you know photos were taken and how they had to close the place and say we are not uh, open for photographers anymore while wildlife photography can be amazing to give so many positives uh, somewhere i think um, the missing link is you know uh, going to show up in these kind of things where you want to do something great but you end up with uh, so i i tell you simple so i, I uh, you, you have uh, you are asking me a question or should i no no this is my thought right? and i'd love your feedback and your closing ah, comment so my feedback is this jain mm. you we know of law right mm. so any law mm. um when it's first enacted mm-hmm. it is because of one or two cases that happened right mm mm-hmm. and people speak about that and they say oh but we don't have a law to govern this mm. that is introduced so when that law mm. comes in it is based on one or two cases obviously it is not robust which means it may not work in all conditions right over a period of time mm-hmm. the law needs to be amended right as and right. when more things happen and therefore law that exists for many years and has gone through many amendments is mm-hmm. the far more robust mm-hmm. and a law which is applicable with few lacunes right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right similarly uh think about to hold mm. the to hold is you are saying you have a client base of 10000 just Uh, mm-hmm. In the last one year, ten mm-hmm. thousand people were trained. Mm-hmm. What happens is when they were, when they came to you, mm-hmm. and now that they have come to you, mm-hmm. their understanding of and you could have your parameters for it, which means mm-hmm. to understand terminology, mm-hmm. to understand camera, to understand mm-hmm. light, to understand mm-hmm. the basics of Lightroom. Mm-hmm. So whatever your parameters are, that mm-hmm. has gone up. Mm-hmm. So the one who was the least interested also understands more than when he came. Right. So what happens is now when they start looking at photography now on, mm-hmm. they will not be those people who will try and infringe in mm-hmm. the private spaces of wildlife. Right. Right. True. So True. in when you get into any project, I feel that there is always a chance of people mm-hmm. misusing or doing crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. True. Right. But one should not stop at that level. Right. That is how things go. People right. go overboard. Mm. and if you can sustain that or if you can bring it to a certain control uh, mm-hmm. controlled situation mm-hmm. the population will understand and then you don't have for instance think about it when you go into a tiger reserve how mm-hmm. many times have you seen a tourist throw wrappers in the jungle very few times mm-hmm. true mm-hmm. why when they came maybe 10 mm-hmm. years ago they probably mm-hmm. threw but now mm. that they are coming in again and again the same mm. person when they are outside probably will not think twice before throwing a uh plastic a kind mm. of a whatever plastic or something outside i'm not saying but they, there could be mm. but inside mm. they don't right, right. so right. it is all about knowledge mm. it is all about awareness and so while we introduce these things we have to mm. constantly build awareness like covid mm. the mm. first wave people mm. were uh, aware but they mm-hmm. never worried about the masks mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they thought indians are blessed that we have the best immune system on earth and that covid kuch nahi hota because if we have eaten pani puri on the road side we can kill covid right right now sadly the second wave mm-hmm. has hit every household true i have lost friends you have mm-hmm. lost friends we have right. lost family sure. now you tell somebody about the mask i'm mm. talking about not all across india because uh, many places this is the first wave mm-hmm. right within india True. the first wave True. never came so right i'm talking about wherever the impact is there people mm. now understand mm. 
that right. you always see on television mass sitting here but mm-hmm. that is just an outlier most people mm-hmm. understand so right. all i'm saying is even in any program you do there will always be a backlash most people get worried about uh, negative reporting mm-hmm. and bad name and all mm-hmm. how are we going to solve we cannot create perfection mm-hmm. without trying so mm-hmm. let us try and people will put systems in place so this right. amur felt issue i mm. see the positives of it also that right but people now i have realized that amur falcon is not something that you can see only in nagaland right right you can see and therefore you need to be uh, attentive you need to mm. observe all the birds you see mm-hmm. any mm-hmm. bird can and because it's a migrant and it could mm. be anywhere mm. so that it's only a matter of time when so if this happens for instance cast plateau cast is a mm. beautiful uh, 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 laterite plateau grassland in near right. satara maharashtra about 5 right. hours from bay uh-huh. when it happened when people started it, they were there for thousands of years it's uh-huh. just somebody marketed it and right. then you start that a million people going there in just one month right true so, uh, and they started behaving like they were amitabh bachchan or silsila <laughs> lying on the grass and all that and so people doing that is okay but 1 million people doing that the it will destroy Grassy. the grassland true subsequently what has happened is they have built a uh barricade in certain mm. areas but not all mm. but mm. people i have seen that during the first years and i because it's close by and i keep going to uh, mm. the tiger reserve which is not very mm. fast sayadri so you have mm-hmm. to pass so so i see during seasons that people are now understood mm. that the grass you know that mm. it damages so it's right. how it is so if you just start reacting mm. then there's a problem so i think uh, sure. all these issues that we are in i am why i give elaborate answers is that uh-huh. more often than not uh-huh. uh, it is not a short one line thing because right. the uh, the problems and everything that we talk of and it is wildlife or it is science or it is politics it is all about the way we process in our brain right so i try right. to go back in the foundation and then talk about it rather than giving you an answer saying that oh, don't worry this you try it and it will happen or not happen all right it's not right. inside our brain we process things in a certain way so we have to think about this rather than you know outside there and most new sure. idea uh, right. will fail you know the startups game thousand right. people want to have startups probably five uh, and sometimes from a million one bezo will come right <laughs> true true oh, that's good oh, right thank you anish it's been uh, fabulous um, you've been talking for a long time and i'm i'm really recollecting everything that you said and processing the information i'm very happy that uh, we found time today to uh, chat upon so many such things i'm going to publish this i would request you to send some pictures so that i use them in the appropriate places and uh, Uh, any closing comments you want to say something to all the wildlife enthusiasts photographers and um, you know um, um, uh, make make some kind of a wish for uh, the very world of wildlife that we all love yeah so i simply put i think um, uh, you photographers have to understand that in this last 14 years uh, through your work through whether you are an amateur or a professional you have really brought lot of happiness uh to the lives of uh, people you don't even know mm. and so don't worry about uh whether your photography has really uh, uh, given you money or whether it is worth traveling and spending so much money to go and do that mm-hmm. uh it is really paid back mm-hmm. uh you know in in the weight of gold mm-hmm. and so i think we, you guys should go out there um enjoy yourself i think enjoyment is everything we don't have to always keep worrying about you know uh you know about um the theory <laughs> about getting that perfect image uh-huh. being the best don't do that just go express yourself you are a unique human being mm-hmm. the photos you take mm-hmm. in whatever way mm-hmm. is unique right. no two photos are same mm-hmm. so don't worry about comparing yourself with photographers who have name because people mm. have name for many reasons it's not mm-hmm. because they are the best photographers mm-hmm. just because somebody participated in a competition and won mm-hmm. it suddenly mm-hmm. overnight they become the best photographer true true so true don't compete with anybody just mm. go out there like a child <laughs> go explore mother nature with your camera right. try and reduce your footprint on it and 
bring out the positives in nature there are a lot of negatives mm. and which we all know mm -hmm. but try and see if your photography can not create artificial environment in the mind mm -hmm. of people but at least many people are not mm -hmm. so privileged as mm -hmm. you who have figured out so early that uh, that nature is the best teacher so right. try and communicate that to those millions mm -hmm. who are not as fortunate as you are to understand fantastic. that uh, this is their calling that's all fantastic 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 uh, closing thoughts sanish i'm grateful on behalf of tohold and all the patrons and of course i'm going to put this on our youtube and other social media channels i'm sure there'll be a lot more people who will see this uh, we don't get to meet you every now and then in so many years that i know you i've been to the field with you even once hope that changes in the future I'd love to go somewhere with you and spend some time uh, enjoying nature wildlife and take some pictures and talk about all these amazing things i it will be my pleasure <laughs> thank you anish thank you very much you i hope you have uh, um you know um, a, a great time ahead and i i do hope this covid situation is uh, you know something which will end soon and we all can get back to the places we love to go to yeah yeah we all need to get back <laughs> thank the you forest are calling us they must be missing <laughs> us you know <laughs> <laughs> true 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 thank you very much it's been a pleasure anish thank you very much